Well, my presentation today is on uh, biomedical technology management. Is there anybody here who has got a biomedical technology background? Not really. So that gives me an idea of how should I proceed with this presentation. Now in this presentation, I'll be talking to you about the role of biomedical engineering in hospitals, new, bi bio new biomedical technology and future trends of it, future of biomedical engineering departments in role of the public hospitals, and what could be done to maintain reliability and patient safety. Now, the role of uh, biomedical technology in the hospital, in the modern world, medical technology has play, is playing a significant role in patient care and delivery system. The old medical procedure, no matter which one you think of, involves technology of some form. Therefore, clinicians depend a lot on the technology today. The biomedical equipment engineers, technicians, technologists primarily work on the front line of healthcare facilities and assist clinicians in patient care and safety and management of the equipment. Now let's think about modern medical technology and future trends. If you look at this technology in there, this modern technology is finding its way into the medical world very quickly. It's one of the fastest growing industry now. Google Glass technology has come up on board just recently and has been trialed in a few hospitals at the moment. And it's called software. It, it is run by software called VIZR, Visual Information Zonal Reminder. Now this technology is a wearable technology where a surgeon can wear like a normal glass and it has got a display on the on its lens and that connects you straight to the internet and they can talk to their colleagues on the other part of the world and discuss hands-free and I get it voice operated. There's a move in the hospitals now to take home the health care. In other words, instead of getting the patient to the main hospital, move them to the home care. So Sharp is the company who has developed this technology. It's called Health Check Chair, which has got multiple sensors. You hop in the chair and it with its multiple sensors will take you a vital signs and then it is able to link it to the cloud where your your clinicians can have a look and discuss with your health health from remotely. Not only that, Roberts has made their way to the hospital as well. It is currently used in the University of Medical California Medical Center in San Francisco, where these always are able to go from word to word, floor to floor in the hospitals, and they are able to guard goods and waste materials and do wood runs as well. Using the Wi-Fi system, they are able to call the lifts to their right level, hop onto it without bumping into each other, and then go to the next level and do the same thing. You might be thinking, what will happen to the people who work in the front line? It's something that we need to think about in time to come. Just for your benefit, I've quickly put to some of the typical technology used in the hospital today. On the top left-hand corner, you'll see ICU, which is a typical bed space in any hospital. And you can see it's full of technology. You've got a bed which is full of technology. At the back, you can see there's infusion systems. On the right, this is a ventilation and, a, and a monitoring system. And if you look at the right side of the slave on top, you'll see operating theater. Ten years ago, if you looked at that, you'll be having a hunk of equipment sitting there. But today, they're miniaturized. They're getting smarter, faster, and gives more room to the clinicians to move around while they're working on the patient. On the left-hand side, the bottom, there's a typical vital science monitor which you'll see in the intensive care unit or in the current care unit. Now, the curve that I put in is a typical ECG QRS curve. This is for you to understand how the biomedical engineers interpret this when the clinician calls them and says, look, this patient's ECG seems not right. The biomedical engineer needs to be able to interpret that and also be able to understand that whether what the clinician is asking for is really been produced correctly from the equipment. I don't know if you have done ECG or not, but if you have taken ECG, you'll see that the doctor has put 12 leads on you, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and chest leads. Each lead picks information from your body, interprets it electronically, and presents it in a clinical form, which then means an engineer has to understand not only technological way, but he has to also understand whether it's been operated properly, whether, whether it is producing the right curve, and what clinician is looking for is it's the right thing he's looking at. 
So how biomedical technology is currently managed in the public hospitals? In most cases, currently managed by biomedical engineering departments. So the question arises, what they exactly do? The current setup in most of the hospitals, biomedical engineering's role is to assist the hospital procurement department in biomedical equipment purchase. Technical support technically support the clinicians and manage biomedical technology through their data or asset management system, and of course, repair, calibrate, maintain the clinical equipment. Now, the question arises now is that if the modern technology is getting complex and high tech, then how biomedical engineering department's role is likely to change in future? What hospitals need to do to maintain quality, reliability, and patient safety? And how biomedical engineering department can adapt to these changes? Keep in mind, I did a research on this, and in that, res in that research, I have taken qualitative and case study approach. Data was collected by face-to-face, -face, document review, and direct observation in the hospitals. And the data collected, I analyzed it through thematic analysis. Then in that, in that research, I found that biomedical technology in future are likely to continue assisting hospital management in pre-purchase consultation role, meaning that when the hospital is about to purchase an equipment, biomedical engineer will be able to see whether it's integratable in the hospital, whether, it, whether it's going to be cost effective, whether there will be a support available from the manufacturer over the lifespan of the unit. Technical support to the clinicians, but the question is what capacity? More and more equipment are now manufactured where the self-diagnostics are already put in the unit which means if there's an error, it'll, it'll give you an error if there's some sort of mishaps in the equipment. The question then arises to us is, is the clinician going to rectify that error or they're gonna call a biomedical engineer to do that? And if, it's, if the clinician is going to do that, is he wasting his valuable time on the equipment other than the patient? So that's something to think about and how it's gonna be sustainable in time to come. Not only that, they need to be a bit more refined database these days. That's what the research has looked at. When I looked at some of the hospital my research, I found equipment were not specified properly. Some of them were said, fridge. The question is, what type of fridge? Whether it was a drug fridge, blood fridge, what? So they need to be more refined to have a reliability in feature. Now, repair, calibrate, maintenance, and equipment-wise, more and more equipment are now miniaturized. Therefore, they are not repaired. Therefore, it cannot be repaired on the side. So, therefore, you still have to have a quality assurance done in these hospitals because equipment may be working fine, but may be drifted from its specification, which means it's likely that that the clinician might take the results and do a wrong diagnostic of the patient. Now, to maintain the sustainable reliability in this research, I found. The biomedical department needs to pay attention to the following key factors. Establish a comprehensive database, which we just discussed. Systemization of service delivery. Implement professional development plan for the engineers. Human element of service delivery. Service quality, customer satisfaction, and knowledge management. Now, customer satisfaction sounds very much business oriented, but the way the hospitals are operating these days, or asked to operate, is operate as a business venture. Now in system, systemization, biomedical engineering departments got to have adequate technological capabilities such as computers, diagnostic tools, test equipment, ICT knowledge, and some clinical knowledge and technical skills to perform their work. Quality manuals should be, ISO, should be outlining policies, equipment repair processes, complaint handling, acceptance of new equipment, and equipment-related complaints or incidents. Customer service skills. I know the engineers in the university these days, they, don't, they are not taught a lot about customer service, customer, customer skills, but they talk all about engineering, design, etc., etc. But the actual product that they're producing to, to the market is not something they use every day in the industry. So, the, so obviously, records and traceability is another key factor that came up. The other factor was implement professional development plan. Of course, engineers who are working in the field or coming out of the universities got to have software skills, financial understanding analysis. That's when they can help the pre-purchase consultation process. Regulatory process so they understand whether equipment is manufactured, is manufactured according to the specification or the country's rules and regulations. 
project design, planning and management is one of the skills they need to hold the major projects like setting up a new hospital or setting up a new unit. And technical writing and reporting, of course, getting more and more business-oriented hospitals. Therefore, they also need to present papers on the grounds of costing, etc. The human element of the service delivery, time management skills is very important. This will help to help have the equipment downtime to minimum. Sense of responsibility. You know, when the case is cancelled in the operating theatre, how ripple effect takes place? For example, clinical setup, pre-op, preparation, and so forth. So it's very important that the equipment is operating or should be able to do the procedure they are planned for the day. Otherwise, it's not cost effective. Complaint handling skills is also something important because there could be many different types of skills. For example, patient might got injured, the equipment not working at the right time, equipment not giving the correct readings, and so forth. Quality systems and traceability is also important in terms of if this case there's a patient got hurt. You should be able to trace the equipment that was used on the patient, be able to have a record of that, whether it's drifted or there's a clinician's error. Over the years, the history shows that clinicians has smartly put the equipment error and it was all swept under the carpet. No more. Things are now changing. Now, knowledge management is also very important. They say the knowledge management has been recognized as an important predictive factor of organization by the knowledge management gurus. Some of them are listed there. A quick framework I have put together that just to discuss this. Identification of knowledge needs is important. Every time a new piece of equipment is purchased to the hospital, we find out that people got to understand in the hospital or the managers got to understand instead of looking at the budget, they got to understand that, that there's a need for this machine to be looked right through their lifestyle. So they get to know, understand what knowledge is needed, what skill is needed in the, in the, in the hospital while the equipment is there. So they got to discover whether that knowledge is still existing in the hospital or not. If it is, then get, they get to see how that can be shared around. If not, then they should go forward and see how this knowledge can be created. Now there's whole little ways of creating the knowledge. Maybe go to the, go to the manufacturer, ask them to do any service training, get them a factory training, and so forth. Storage of information. If they have got the knowledge about that particular piece of equipment, then they got to understand where to be stored, how it can be shared around. And sharing of knowledge is also very important because this is a, something that Culturally, it can be promoted within the hospital or within the department so that people do not hold the knowledge and then one day they decide to pick the bag and walk away. So this is very important. And therefore, for that, we have to hospitals have to create a culture of sharing knowledge. In the use of application of the knowledge, there could be a whole, sort, whole lot of knowledge there, uh, information, th information there, excuse me. It is not important or not applicable unless it's put in the practice. So therefore, it is very important that for future sustainable reliability of this equipment, all these factors are taken in care. Thank you.